Isaiah 61, the prophet Isaiah is delivering a, a, a word from the Lord that is a prophecy concerning the nation of Israel, and it's concerning the kingdom. Now, a lot of folks that are not students of the Bible try to intertwine the kingdom and the church age that we live in. They're two separate things. Uh, we live in the day of grace, and by the way, it's always been a day of grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, but we live in the fullness of the times of the Gentiles. We live in the church age when Jesus uh, is uh, building his bride, if you will, and there's coming a day that he's going to take us out of here, and there's going to be seven years of tribulation period. And then we're coming back with the Lord on white horses, as according to Revelation 19. And the Lord's going to put an end to all the enemies of Israel and those that have fought against Israel. And you'll find in the Battle of Megiddo, or what we call the Battle of Armageddon that happens in the Valley of Megiddo, all nations will turn against Israel. But the Lord will come and defend Israel. Uh, his chosen people, and we'll come back with him. And then the Lord himself is going to sit on the throne of David, and he's going to rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years that we entitle the millennial reign of Christ. But that's when it'll be the kingdom time. That's when Israel will be restored. You see, Israel's had a problem for a lot of years. God will bless her. She'll do good for a while, and then she'll turn from God, serve other gods. And then God will bring persecution on her to get her back to where she should be. Uh, and uh, throughout the prophecies concerning Israel, she's warned of a time, and Daniel brings it out this way, a time of Jacob's trouble. And during that time, that'll be that seven-year tribulation period, God is going to purge Israel. And after that period, there'll be 12,000 of each of the 12 tribes of Israel that have come out of the great tribulation period. Uh, and then God's going to set up his kingdom. Now, he is dealing in this chapter with that restoration period, with that kingdom age, with that time that Israel will once again walk truly with the Lord. And he's given Israel some hope that there's coming a day that God's going to do something tremendous for her. Now Israel's problem is, is Israel throughout the years will take prophecy and not apply them properly. When Jesus came the first time, they weren't looking for a savior, they was looking for the Messiah who's going to come and establish the kingdom. And that's why many Jews today will not believe on the Lord because they're still looking for a Messiah. The sad thing is, is they'll never get to know Messiah until they know the savior. And what a blessing that you and I have been grafted into the true vine through the church, through the Lord Jesus Christ by being saved. But I say that with this in mind. The Apostle Paul told, tells us that the Old Testament was written for our ensamples. It was written for our example. And there are things we can glean from that can help us today. The same Lord that is rich over Israel is rich over all that call upon him. And he's rich to you and I tonight. He died for us. He saved us. He sealed us. There's no good thing he'll withhold from us if we'll seek his face in hunger and thirst for the Lord. Said all that say this. Isaiah 61, verse number 1, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for that firm foundation we have. Thank you for the good congregational singing. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Thank you for the good testimony. Thank you for just being a good God. Lord, we're thankful Miss Crystal's back tonight. I pray that you would just restore her cells and her body. 
Lord, over the next few weeks, and God touch her in an immaculate way. Or when she goes back, the doctors would just be totally amazed. Uh, Lord, I pray you'd touch that dear saint. Lord, thank you, Miss Brandy's back today. Help her with her ear infection. I pray for Brother Ed. I know he'd be here if he didn't feel so poorly. I pray for him. I pray for Miss Janet the same. I pray for others that were sick, that God, you would touch them and help them. I pray for every special need, every special prayer request. Those that are providentially hindered, God, I pray for them that, God, you would move in their lives. Uh, now, Father, I pray you'd help us. I pray you'd sit down amongst us. There's no telling uh, what people are facing, what they're going through, uh, what they will go through. But, God, I know you know it all. And, God, I pray that, Lord, uh, those that need the message tonight would embrace it as Brother Ray has uh, already prayed. Uh, and, Lord, there may be some that uh, are not in that position tonight, but maybe they will be in the days to come. May they store it up. That when trials come, that when floods come, that when uh, opposition comes, uh, they'll have something of reserve in their soul that God will help them uh, to face the day that falls upon them. God, help us. Bless now. Bless those working with our young people on the other side. Uh, help those young people. God, do a great work, and we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful and holy name we do pray. Amen. And amen. I want you to notice a couple things from this prophecy. I want you to notice, first of all, the anointing. We find in verse number one, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Can I say that? He is anointed. No one can ever do a work from God unless God anoints them to do it. And certainly no man can ever stand between God and man unless he has a call and an anointing on his life. Uh, notice uh, the anointing. He's anointed to preach. What a blessing. Uh, he said, he's anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. Uh, what a blessing that God calls me and he anoints them to preach the gospel today. The good news of Jesus Christ. And again, uh, no one that has ever truly uh, done a work from God done it without being anointed and called of God. Uh, and it amazes me, God chooses the base things to confound the wise. Uh, uh, some of the greatest preachers that have ever been were once some of the greatest sinners that ever been. Uh, and God will confound people how he can take a wicked sinner... Uh, saving, changing, cleansing, uh, anointing, uh, and then sending forth to do a tremendous work uh, for the cause of Christ. Uh, we find he anointed him to preach. He anointed him to prop up. Look what he said. Uh, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Uh, uh, listen, I've been in this thing for a long time, not as long as Brother Adrian, because uh, I'm not as old as him. But can I say this? Uh, I've been in this thing a long time, uh, and one thing I've found is that there are people uh, who get hurt. There are people uh, who become brokenhearted. Uh, they can become brokenhearted because of their children. They can become brokenhearted because of a spouse. They can become broken hearted because of finances, because of a job, uh, because of a neighbor, because of a fellow Christian. Uh, all I know uh, is God equipped us with feelings. Uh, and if you live long enough, your feelings are going to get hurt. Uh, and sometimes your feelings get devastated so much uh, it breaks your heart. Uh, but I have learned this, uh, that the Lord uh, has a word for the broken hearted. Uh, and if you come uh, ready to hear what thus saith the Lord, uh, it doesn't matter how deep the wound is. God has a bomb of Gilead. God can help you through your brokenness and God can do a work in your life that will help you on down the road. What a blessing. And can I say one of the things that is today that preachers deal with, we've got to prop people up. We've got to help people. People have been broken hearted. I told Miss Annette that I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about coming up with a conference where I invite a bunch of pastors, we get together somewhere, and we, we, we may have eventually have some preaching, but I just want to sit down and ask preachers how they deal with some of the things I have to deal with. I'm serious. You'd never know some of the things people go through. And some of the things that people go through, they go through, 
and the devil just sits in their lap and they very seldom get any victory. And I want to talk to other preachers. How do you deal with that? Because I know we're all fighting the same devil and we're all dealing with some of the same things. And there are people facing grave things. Uh, and one of the things today, I mean, used to preachers just preach, but now uh, we got to preach and we got to prop people up. And that takes an anointing of God to be able to help people in the midst of their brokenness. Uh, can I say he's also anointed to proclaim? Look what he said. Uh, 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 he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives. What a blessing for people to know they can have liberty. What a blessing to know that people can find out they don't have to be bound to whatever it is all their lives. Listen, the devil wants to keep you bound. He wants to keep you defeated. He'll bound you with guilt. He'll bound you with doubt. He'll bound you with all kinds of things. Uh, but hey, I got a good word for you tonight. Uh, uh, you don't have to stay bound. You can have liberty in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Uh, and the Lord uh, uh, said he come to set us free and free indeed. Uh, and you can be free from all that stuff. Uh, if you'll believe and trust the Lord. Now, I don't mean to be unkind, but I'm going to kind of meddle a little bit right now. And again, I'm not trying to be unkind. But Brother Brian, by the way, you look sharp tonight. A lot of people, they're their own worst enemy. And can I say a lot of people are never strengthened by the Lord because they're weak-minded. They're weak-minded. They get up convinced that they can never be more than what they are. Right. And in your flesh, you're right. right. In your flesh, you are what you are. Amen. But if you're born again, you've been indwelt by the Spirit of God, uh, and He can do for you what you cannot do for yourselves. Amen. Now you can accept uh, your weakness in your flesh, uh, and be a failure if you want to. But if you trust the Lord uh, and you believe His promises uh, and you put faith in what God says, you can rise above uh, what your flesh says that you are and what you can be. You can be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Uh, you can find grace uh, for help in time of need. Uh, you can find strength uh, in your weakness. Uh, but you, my dear friends, uh, got to quit looking at you uh, and get to looking at the promises of God uh, and just believe what God said. Uh, he's given you a measure of faith to do it. Uh, you can find liberty uh, in your captivity. Uh, Amen. Just some people won't believe it. Brother Ron, we can't help people that don't want to believe what God said. Right. Hmm. You want to believe your failure? You can believe that. And you'll be a miserable Christian. Amen. Where you can realize, not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Amen. And you can rise above your weakness. And I praise the Lord for that. And Isaiah said he anointed me to do that. He also anointed uh, Isaiah to go to the prisoners. Look what he says. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. You don't need to be in prison to whatever it is. You can find victory in Jesus. Yeah, right. We sang that this morning. Some people want to hold on to a past failure or hold on to guilt or hold on to this and hold on to that. Well, friend, why do you want to hold on to that? Amen. All it does is drag you down. You can find victory in the Lord, Amen. but you must choose to believe the Lord. Hmm? Isaiah said he's been anointed. We see the anointing. Notice the acceptable in verse number 2. He said, He anointed me for this reason, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. Isaiah said he has uh, anointed me to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He said, friends, it's not always going to be this way. You can find hope tonight. And by the way, if we're saved, we've got a blessed hope. Yes. Right. 
this old world is getting worse and this old world is spinning to the, to the point where uh, uh, the Antichrist is about to take over. We're headed to a one world government. Uh, we got uh, uh, that uh, uh, mindset through many of uh, uh, some of the most wealthy and powerful people in this world. Uh, they want to have a one world government. Uh, we're headed in that direction. Uh, my dear friends, I don't know how, how much longer we have, but I know one thing. Uh, the world's not getting better. It's getting worse. Uh, uh, if it's not uh, uh, poverty, uh, if it's not a natural disaster, uh, if it's not uh, 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 some other problem, inflation, uh, 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 folks are just having a struggle to deal with life and deal with things. Uh, and uh, we're living in a day and age where Big Brother is uh, seeping in and creeping in uh, and taking over more and more. Uh, we're headed to a cashless society. Uh, we're headed to governmental control. Uh, I listened to one of Kamala's ads today uh, where she talked about everybody deserves to have the same health care. She's talking about Obamacare. Uh, Obamacare is the most expensive insurance out there uh, and it does the least for people. Uh, but she said everybody deserves to have it. Uh, what is she saying? Everybody deserves to be under governmental control. Uh, uh, she's talked about uh, having commonality amongst all of our citizens uh, uh, to tax the rich uh, and give to the poor. Uh, I want to help you with something. She's not Robin Hood. Uh, uh, what she's talking about is communism uh, uh, where the elite have it all uh, and everybody else has to depend on the elite to have anything. Uh, you can see what it done for China. You can see what it done for Cuba. You can see what it does uh, throughout uh, uh, citizens of the world that are under the power of communism. Uh, uh, we're headed that way. Uh, hey, uh, we live in a day and age uh, where they have cameras everywhere. Uh, uh, big brother knows what you're doing. Uh, uh, big, we, li uh, we live on them cell phones uh, and they have computers that uh, are programmed to listen uh, and to see what you're looking at, what you're dealing with. Uh, 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 Miss Annette, I was talking the other day about something. Uh, uh, next day I'm getting ads for it on the phone uh, 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 and on the computer. Uh, hey, uh, we're living in a day and age where big brother's ready to move in and take over. Uh, I've got news for for you tonight. Uh, you and I ought to take hope into that. Uh, I don't like Big Brother book, uh, putting his nose in my business, uh, but there's coming a day uh, when the Lord's about ready to snatch us out of here. Uh, they're already starting the UFO alien lies. They're starting all kinds of other things. Uh, hey, uh, the Bible says when we see all these things come to pass, uh, lift up your head for your redemption draw and die. Uh, Fred, we're about out of here, and I believe Bless the Lord. Uh, he said, I'm to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. You know what that word acceptable means? It means suitable conditions. And we're living in a suitable condition for the Lord to come. Take hope, friend. By the way, if you're saved, this is as close to hell as we're ever going to get. We ought to rejoice in that. I know things can get bad. Things can get rough. Uh, 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 can I just say this? Miss Nett and I went to Walmart late last night. Never go to Walmart on a Saturday night. Go to Walmart on a Monday morning when they're not out of bed. Uh, hey, I seen, I, they had to be a gang. I seen a gang of, of immigrants that made me a little uneasy because I only had one clip on me. I'm serious. We walked through the grocery section, and at Walmart, if you've been there, and if you're a hillbilly, you've been there, it starts out with the fruits and vegetables, and it goes all the way through the dry goods, and then the soft drinks, and then you get to the end, you finally get to the dairy. Well, she needed some sour cream, which means we had to walk through all that. We finally got back to the dairy, and I seen a white fella, and wanted to go up and say, thank you, sir, for being here. I thought I was in a foreign country. <laughs> there were some folks from Africa that were staring at the, about run over us. Because they never looked up, they're staring at their phone, and the phone's interpreting to them what they need to find out where all that stuff is. And I mean, there's folks around, I'm talking about, I saw things, that, and I'm thinking, am I still in America? I'm telling you, you see all this stuff, I don't know about you, but I get a little uneasy. Amen. I'm not against folks coming here from other countries. They need to come legally. We got three young men sitting back there. They have come legally. 
And I'm glad they're here. They're blessing our church. I saw them up there with the possums. Who would have ever thought we had some St. Lucians who would become possums? I mean, that's, that's a work of God. Oh, what a blessing. Uh, that's not a good title for them because in Grenada they eat possums. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm here to say, you see things going on in this world, it troubles us. But it ought to excite us. Because we're in the acceptable year. It could be any time. You ought to be ready. The Lord's are coming. And then we see that, that Isaiah deals with an appointment. I'm glad I got an appointment, aren't you? Yeah. Amen. For it's appointed unto men once to die, and after this is the judgment. We all got an appointment, but I'm glad I'm on the right side of that deal, aren't you? Amen. Um, but he deals with an appointment. He says in verse number 3, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Notice he's appointed to the mourning. He deals with the mourning, those that are grieving, those that are grieving for a homeland that has been taken from them, those that are now literally slaves wishing for freedom, those that have watched loved ones taken and murdered before them, those that have lost their song because they're in a foreign land, and he deals with them. He tells them, those that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He's saying, even when you've lost your song, if you begin to praise the Lord, you'll find your spirit lifted. He's dealing with those that are mourning. Amen. And he deals with those that are mourning that he might help them become monuments. Look what he says that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Now listen, I know some that are in here tonight that have faced grave things. Some in here tonight, and I don't want to make light of the fact that you've had your heart broken. You've had things happen in your life that maybe you haven't even still gotten over. Things that affect you, things that you uh, constantly are reminded of that bring hurt into your life. I understand that. I hate that for you. I wish, and I've told several of you, I wish I had a magic wand and I could make it just go away. But can I say that the Lord wants you to trust Him so He can take those things that have brought all that hurt and shame into your life and make you a monument, a tree of righteousness that others can see the work of God in you, that you who should have no hope have a hope that overcomes your hurt. Amen. Can I say every trial, every hardship, everything that the Lord allows to come in our lives, and some of it, my dear friends, uh, wasn't what we would call ordained of God when somebody does something hurtful to us, uh, but the Lord wants to take all those things and show that His grace is sufficient. Sure. And my dear friends, Amen. that's why we come to church to get a word from heaven to help us to overcome. I don't, I don't know. Is anybody in here perfect? Anybody in here ever had a perfect life and never had any problems? No, we all have. Amen. And if you're not careful, you'll live a life of regrets like I preached a few nights ago. But the Lord wants us to embrace Him and His promises and allow Him to do a work in our lives so that He can prop us up as a tree that others can say, Oh, I need the Lord too. Look what He done for them. And then notice He appoints not only to, to the appointments for the morning and to turn them into monuments, but all of it is about magnifying the Lord. Look what it said in verse number 3, that He might be glorified. If you're saved, no matter where you are on the rung of spirituality, deep down inside, you ought to have a desire for the Lord to get glory out of your life. For all that He's done for you, you ought to certainly hope that He gets praise from your life. And that's what a work of grace is all about. 
Now, I'm not going to preach on any of that stuff. I just found it all in there. The thought that it could not get away from is found in verse number 3. He said, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. And I want to preach with God's help on that thought tonight. I want to preach on beauty for ashes. Throughout the Old Testament, you'll find where people mourn, grieve, where they get to the point they realize that they've transgressed against God and they're certainly sorrowful about that and they're repenting of that and they want God to move in their life again. You'll find in all of those circumstances they would wrap themselves in sackcloth, which we would call something like burlap, and it's the base cloth that they could wear. And they would uh, uh, get down in the dust and they would mourn and grieve on their face before God. Uh, and they would take the ashes of sacrifices gone by and they would put those on their heads uh, and they would just cover themselves uh, in the elements and in the baseness uh, that when others pass by, they see that this person is grieving, mourning, repenting, they know this person is trying to get a hold of God to help them with their hurt. And can I say, Isaiah right here reveals that there is a day of hope coming uh, when they will trade their sorrows, when they will trade their misery, when they will trade their ashes into something of beauty. And we, my dear friends, need to do the same thing today. Some of you are carrying around things you've carried for years. You've covered your head with ashes. You've worn sackcloth, spiritual sackcloth long enough to where you've allowed the devil to make you think you can never be used of God. You can never be blessed by God. You're not worthy of God. You're not worthy to come to church. You're not worthy of any. And by the way, none of us are worthy for the grace of God. But being robed in his righteousness, we've been made worthy. Amen. Mm. But some of us never get a hold of that. We just live in that I'm not worthy stage. And some of it could be that the way you was raised, you was constantly told you were worthless. There are people that way. Mm. There are people that are constantly, Seth, you weren't, you were coddled. Uh, you were mama's baby boy until Fred came along. Yeah, and then Owen. Owen broke the mold. Yeah, and he's really coddled. Huh? But you never were told you was worthless. You was never told that you, you aren't lovable. You was never told you could never amount to anything. But there are many people who are. There are many people who never felt loved. There are many people who were raised uh, in our generation uh, Brother Brian with fathers and, and the fathers before us where men just went to work and they were hard and, and they never you know were to show emotion or affection never tell you they loved you they, they proved they loved you by putting food on the table was their mentality right. but we live in a society today that if we're not loving on people oh you my baby boy soft. we are soft huh? Yeah. huh listen this little one right here she'll never know what it is not to be loved Huh? Hi, babe. How are you? You coming to me? You should, because you're about to get whipped. I can see your mama's face, huh? <laughs> but we live in a day and age where people were raised in broken homes, broken relationships, and uh, uh, that's carried on in their Christian life because when they first got saved, they knew joy and they knew love, and all of a sudden they disappointed God, and all that come back uh, where they were told they could never amount to nothing, where they told they were useless and they were worthless uh, and they'd never be anything. Uh, but I've got news for you. Hey, uh, we're renewed in Christ every day. What a blessing. Uh, hey, what a blessing to know uh, uh, when He saved us, He saved us from our past sin, our present sin, and our future sin. Uh, what a blessing to know that God is for us. Uh, and in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. Uh, but in Christ, what a blessing. We're joint heirs to the throne of God. Uh, and friend, He wants to change our ashes uh, into beauty. Uh, what a blessing. That's what I want to preach on. you got to go to meet me. i got to go preach, all right? Love you, baby. Uh, let me give you a few things 
that the Lord will give in order to change the ashes to beauty. Can I say he gives the beauty of the garment of salvation to those who are in the dust of their sin? Do you remember what you was as a sinner? Remember what you was when you was guilty before God? Amen. Brother Ron and I was talking about that for church. Uh, when we was lost uh, under conviction, we knew if we got saved, we couldn't live in our sin anymore. Uh, we knew that if God, we gave our heart to God, there were some things we'd have to turn our back on. Uh, uh, an indictment today, uh, some of these modern uh, so-called preachers uh, that don't preach the Bible, uh, they tell folks, uh, you can believe in Christ and still live in your sin. Uh, the problem is that's not a Bible doctrine. Uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Uh, former things passed away. Uh, Paul said, not, let not at once be named among you as saints and list a bunch of sins. A uh, uh, friend, when God saves you, he changes you. Hallelujah. He found us in the in the gutters of depravity. He found us in the dust of the uh, wickedness of this world. Uh, but when God came by uh, and we put our faith and trust in Jesus, uh, he took the filthiness of our sin, uh, the wickedness of our old lives, uh, and he gave us a garment of beauty. Uh, he robed us in his righteousness. Uh, he became our sacrifice, uh, and he provided a robe for us, uh, a ring on our finger, shoes on our feet. Uh, Hey, we are part of the family of God. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, as wicked as we were before God, before we got saved, uh, today we're a thing of beauty. Uh, when God sees us, uh, He sees Christ. Uh, and we ought to rejoice and bless the Lord. Uh, I'm not in that state anymore. Uh, I'm in Him. Uh, and He's in me. Uh, and I bless the Lord. Uh, that he gave us a garment of beauty. Uh, he gave us a garment of salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. I love that term saved. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saved. I've been rescued from my sin. Uh, I was lost on my way to hell. Uh, but the Lord came by. Uh, told me I didn't have to go to hell. Uh, and he saved me. Uh, and what a blessing. Put me on the old ship of Zion and I'm headed home. Uh, right. Of that old song Brother Clint will sing every now and then. Saved, saved, saved. Uh, saved by the Father, saved by the Son, saved by the Holy Ghost. What a blessing, huh? I'm glad I'm saved. And there's the beauty of the garment of salvation to those in the dust of their sin. Then he gives us the beauty of gifts of the Spirit. And every believer has them. The Bible said in Galatians 5.22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Can I say, when you got sealed by the Holy Ghost, those things came with him. But then Paul told us to work out our own salvation. Amen. Some of you don't show too much love, too much joy, too much peace. Too much gentleness, too much meekness, too much temperance, because you're living uh, by the flesh. Mm. Amen. But if you'd ever let that inner man work his way out, you'll be, you'll be uh, one of the sweetest, most loving, most joyful person uh, that you know. Huh? Right. Mm, quit living in the ashes. Amen. You've been given the gifts of the Spirit. Let them work their way out in your life. Hmm? Amen. Uh, the only reason you're not displaying them because you've got them stored away somewhere. You need to let them out. Amen. We ought to be the sweetest people on the face of the earth. Right. We ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth. We ought to be the most productive people on the face of the earth because we have the Spirit of God in us. Huh? Aren't you glad that He gave us those gifts I'm glad that he, when he saved me, he just didn't leave me. Amen. One of the things I've got a real problem with all these big crusades that have went on for the last 30, 40 years. If they do have converts, what happens to them? Amen. Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. 
It is the will of God for every believer to get into a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Bible-teaching local church and to be discipled so they too could go out and tell folks about Jesus. What good would the gifts of the Spirit be if we don't enact them? And what good would the gifts of the Spirit be if we've never been taught about them? Hmm? Amen. Friend, the Lord took you out of the dust and the filth of this world and He saved you and He put something in you that will help you over those moments we talked about a moment ago that have had you anchored down uh, and thinking that you are a worthless person. Let me say this, nobody's worthless because Jesus tasted death for every man. God gave the best he had for everybody. You're not worthless. Jesus thought you was worth everything. And if you let him take control of your thinking through the scriptures, you'll find out you're you're not as horrible as what you try to convince yourself you are. You'll find out in Christ you're something special. Can I say this? He gave the beauty of gladness for sadness. You don't have to be a mopey, sad individual. Matter of fact, the Bible said in Psalms 30 and 11, Thou hast turned me from my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. The Lord has a word of gladness for you. Even if you are facing some of the most dire things that you can think of, the Lord can still give you the spirit of gladness. Hmm? They're bouncing rocks off of Stephen. He's saying, Lord, don't lay this to the charge. Hmm? He said, I see the Son of Man standing. Huh? He was ready to go home. I think Stephen was a little glad in the moment. Hmm? And if the Lord would do that for Stephen, he'll do that for you because he's no respecter of persons. Right. Uh, but see, it's a thinking issue. If I've got my mind on the scriptures, my spirit can't be broke. But if i got my mind on me, I'm in trouble. Amen. He's got the beauty of gladness for your sadness. Listen, you don't have to memorize the whole Bible to have joy. Matter of fact, I just challenge you to do this. Find one promise in there you can hang on to. That one promise will propel you over most of the things you face. Just find you one. Just get in there and find one. And that'll help you. Hmm? You don't have to memorize the whole Bible. Find you one verse that you can make your verse. And when all the feelings of whatever come against you, get back to that verse. You'll find gladness for your sadness. Then I thought about this. He's got the beauty of the gains that we have as saints. The Lord, when he saved us, he gave us a lot of benefits. I didn't know about it when I first got saved. When I first got saved, all I knew is I needed the Savior. I was lost, and I needed him. Can I say, I, I, I didn't get saved because I didn't want to go to hell, and I didn't get saved because I wanted to go to heaven. I got saved because I realized I was lost, and Jesus would save me. And when I got saved, uh, I had no idea all that came with that. Amen. When Miss Ella Rose learns to say big rev, she'll have no idea what all comes with that. Hmm? She's already got most of my money. But could I say, when I got saved, I had no idea what... Do you realize some of the gifts and some of the gains that we have in being saved? Amen. Can I say, we have the sanctuary. Do you know most places in the world don't have the liberty to come out to a place like this and and congregate and worship and fellowship? What a blessing. We have a place to worship Almighty God. That's a gain, huh? I I, I go around, have you ever drove by some of the cults? How come the Jehovah's Witnesses never open up their windows? This and that says, I want to go there one time, just see what they do. I said, I'll tell you what they do. They brainwash people. You don't want to go in there. Huh? Huh? The Mormon church out there, man, it looks like it's a boarded up prison. Can I say it's not so much what they're hiding, it's what they're trying to keep. They don't want their people to see the light. 
I'm glad we got the sanctuary, and I'm glad we got a place where it says, whosoever will, let them come. Uh, we have nothing to hide. We just have Jesus to shine. Uh, we have the benefit of the sanctuary. We have the benefit of the scriptures. Can I say 90% of our problems would be solved if we just daily read and believed the Bible? Amen. Most of the people that I've dealt with as a pastor the last nearly 30 years, when you get right down to it, you talk to them, it's because they don't, they don't ever eat of the scriptures. They never utilize the scriptures. You sit and you talk to them and they tell you about all the problems in their lives and you start asking them, well, don't, don't you read the Bible? Don't you believe the Bible? Don't you? Well, we get the Bible on Sunday when we come to church. I've never been one that likes cutesy phrases, you know, for churches and church signs and all that. But, you know, if, if, if you don't pray for a week, you'll be weak. You don't read your Bible for a week, you'll be weak. Amen. What a privilege to have the Scriptures. Do you know there are places in the world that the Bible's never been translated into their language? Do you know there are places in the world where it is illegal to have a copy of the Word of God? Amen. Do you know it is a privilege to have the Scriptures? Amen. Yes. Sometimes I'm reading my Bible and I feel guilty because of how many copies I have of it. And there are places that a whole town don't have one copy. It's a gain. It's a benefit to have the Scriptures. It's a benefit to be at a place that preaches and teaches the Scriptures. Amen. That have Sunday school that have back there with our young people. We're not giving them Kool-Aid and cookies. We're giving them the Bible. What a blessing to have a Bible institute where people can learn the Bible. What a blessing to come out here preaching of the Bible and teaching of the Bible. What a blessing to be able to put it under our arms and take it home with us and open it up and read it every day and get a blessing from the Bible. I've heard people say, well, preacher, I just don't read too good. You know what? You've got a phone. It'll read it to you. Huh? I mean, how many times have I been going down the road and just listening to the scriptures? It'll help you. It's a benefit we have. It's a gain we have as saints. How about the serenity, the peace of mind? What a blessing to have peace with God. Amen. I don't have to worry about going to hell. Do mm -hmm. you know why so many wicked people out there fight against the doctrine of hell? Because they hope there's not one. Amen. Well, there is one. But I never have to fear it because I'm not going there because I have peace with God. What a blessing to know is this world is going more chaotic and going insane and all the wickedness going on. I can enjoy life uh, because I have peace with God. I have peace of mind. Uh, I know that there's coming a day the trumpet's going to blow and I'm out of here. What a blessing. Hmm? You know, they can have it. Hmm? What a blessing. And I thought about this. We have the benefit of the saints themselves. You know what a privilege it is to have one another? Amen. Think right now of the relationship and the friends you have in this place. Hmm? Think about it. That's a benefit. What a privilege. Amen. There's not a one of us that if you don't have a dire need that this crowd won't, won't come together and try and help you. Right. That's a privilege. Huh? We don't have to wait on FEMA. Oh, yeah. We got the brethren. Yeah. What a blessing. Hmm? Right, let me get a little person. Miss Crystal, your and Donna's parents, parents, they live away. In your situation, where would you be without the church? Without these people that have helped you? Huh? That have taken care of that darling little baby when, when you're not able. What a blessing. Those that have driven you to your appointment. Those that have cared for you. Huh? What a blessing, huh? And guess what? They didn't ask for anything in return. You know why? Because we are a family, and we love one another. Sure. Just think about the Miss Brandy, where would you be without Christina? Huh? Think about it. She even sits on the same row with you. What a blessing. Huh? Can't get away. She tries, but you just follow. Huh? What a blessing they've been to Samantha. Huh? Huh? What a blessing. Others, and I don't want to point out others, but some of you got some dear friends 
that you just fellowship with. You don't ask anything of one another. You just like spending time with one another. And you just enjoy the fellowship. I told my Sunday school class this morning, you know without Christ, none of us would have ever met. Think about that. But the Lord has fitly framed us together. He has placed us all here. Uh, and we all have a wonderful uh, uh, commitment to one another. We all love one another. What a blessing to be a part of this local city. The saints are a gift from God. Huh? Amen. Amen. One reason we're going to have a picnic, just give us a little time to fellowship more. Because we're all busy. We all got things going on. And then we can just spend a few minutes and just fellowship and spend time with one another. What a blessing, what a gift, what a gain. Huh? In this whole world, they want acceptance. And I didn't even know this until I saw the news last night. There was an LBGQ, BFD, BVD, whatever it is, some meeting here in Boone County yesterday. And they had some woman on there that says, we want everybody to know in Boone County, everybody is welcome, everybody's accepted. Well, they wouldn't welcome me to that crowd. Uh they wouldn't like, the, like what I have to say. Amen. And they were saying, we've got a message of love, not hate. I, 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 I would love on them because I'd tell them the truth. Because right. Jesus loves them. Amen. And Jesus will save them if they're not reprobates. Right. Right. Uh, Paul said, which were effem- which, uh, and the effeminate, which were some of you. Right. Uh, the Lord has saved them, some of them in the past, and he's still in the saving business. Right. Right. But I would tell them the truth in love. I wouldn't be a, 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 a hateful and nasty to them. I'd just tell them the truth. They wouldn't like it because they fight against that. Do you know where there's only one place in this world where folks are truly welcome and where they can truly be accepted? That's in the beloved through Christ Jesus. When you get born again, you're instantly accepted into the family of God. What a blessing. Amen. And what a blessing that he puts us in local assemblies that we can grow in grace together. What a blessing to know that today. We find that there are gains we have as saints. And then lastly, we find that the beauty for ashes is that our lives will glorify the Savior. Can I say, the Lord does work in our lives so we can let our light shine, that others can see Jesus in us. We're to be a city set on a hill. Amen. They're to see something in our lives that they don't have. Something that Hollywood can't muster up. Do you ever notice every Hollywood movie about church, they'll play Amazing Grace, but they live like the devil? Hmm? Hmm? Always they'll show preachers got a drinking problem or an adultery problem or some kind of problem. I'm glad in reality, it's a whole lot better than what Hollywood produces. Amen. They need to see the light of our Lord Amen. shine in our lives. Amen. We're to glorify the Savior by having a look of hope on our face. Do you know in the Bible it teaches that even when we're fasting, the world shouldn't know it? We're not to have shamefacedness? Folks ought to see something in us and see something in our countenance. And there are some of you, you just, you just glow with joy. That's a blessing. That's what folks ought to see. We're to glorify the Savior by lifting him up in praise. How are they going to know about him if we don't tell them? Somebody said, boy, you, you seem happy today. Well, let me tell you why. Jesus came into my life. Amen. Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. Bless the Lord for Jesus. And we're to glorify the Savior by taking the gospel to the lost. And letting them know Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Said all that to say you don't have to stay in the ashes. The Lord has provided beauty for our ashes. He's provided something that will cause our lives to have meaning and to find hope and peace in the Lord. If you're struggling with something, the Lord wants to help you. Why don't you let him? Why don't you just say, Lord, I need your help. Let me help you something. As soon as you say, Lord, he'll be there to help you. Hmm? Uh, just say, Lord. Peter's out there walking on the water, gets looking around, starts to sing. He says, Lord, Lord's right there. 
Now, I don't know how far he had to go to the Lord, but as soon as he said, Lord, the Lord lifted him up. Uh, can I say, he wants to help you too. All you got to do is call on him. You say, Lord, you know what I struggle with. Will you give me some help? He'll give you beauty for your ashes. He'll give you a, a promise. He'll give you some strength. He'll give you something from the glory world that you don't have. Because he doesn't want you to live in misery. He wants you to live in victory. And he wants you to be an example, a tree of righteousness in this wicked world. And that can, be ha that can happen if you'll just put your faith in him. It amazes me, Brother Adrian, how many people have enough faith that Jesus will take them to heaven, but they don't have faith that he'll help them while they're here. He'll help you. If you call on him, let's all stand. Miss Tina, if you'll come. Brother Clint, if you'll come, get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The invitation's open. The altar's open. All you need to do is come and ask the Lord for some help. He's got beauty for your ashes. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Help us now in this invitation. Glorify your name. And God, help folks in their state where maybe ashes control their lives, turn that into beauty. And Father, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.